This is the J. Scott Outdoors podcast on Western big game hunting and fishing brought to you by GoHunt.com Insider. Research faster, hunt more. Go to GoHunt.com forward slash insider and join today. I'm your host, J. Scott, and I live and breathe hunting and fishing, spending half the year in the field experiencing God's creation. I hope you'll enjoy hearing about our adventures. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we've got a great episode talking about big antelope bucks. Uh, Craig Steele of Exclusive Pursuit Outfitters is going to be with us today. And uh, him and his partner, Lee Murphy, had an extra special year this year and harvested some great bucks and uh, had a great antelope season, a couple of 85 or better bucks and then a 90-inch buck. And uh, it's going to be a great episode to hear how their season went. I want to thank you guys, the listeners, for tuning in here at the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. And I want to thank you for all the kind words on iTunes uh, in the comment section and for all the five-star ratings. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, go on iTunes and give us a, a good comments and a five-star ratings that helps our placement uh, there on iTunes. Um, guys, Uh, I never would have thought the podcast uh, would be as successful as it is, and I just want to thank you guys for that. Um, I also want to thank our sponsors, the title sponsor, GoHunt.com Insider. Uh, GoHunt.com Insider, uh, tomorrow, Monday, November 2nd, are going to announce the winners of the October giveaway. And uh, if you didn't hear, the October giveaway was two spots uh, on a rut coos deer hunt down in Sonora, Mexico with Dar Colburn and myself at Colburn and Scott Outfitters. And the hunt's going to, we're going to take off on January 7th and uh, we're going to hunt all the way through uh, the 14th and return back to the U.S. on the 15th. Uh, It's going to be prime rutting. Uh, We've had some great success down there in years past and uh, this year should be no different. So, Monday, tomorrow, tune in. Uh, GoHunt.com is going to announce the two winners. Uh, Hopefully, they're both uh, J. Scott Outdoors podcast listeners. I want to thank GoHunt.com Insider for uh, their sponsorship of this podcast. I also want to thank DeadeyeOutfitters.com. They just recently had their breast cancer awareness campaign in the month of October and Thanks to you guys, uh, raised a bunch of money for breast cancer research, and I just want to thank you for that. Uh, you you can go on DeadeyeOutfitters.com and order hats, t-shirts, hoodies, uh, lots of really good gear, and use the J. Scott promo code and get a 10% discount on all purchases. Um, guys, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a great run here this fall. Uh, things are just clicking along. Uh, I'm about to head up on a uh, mule deer hunt uh, with Parker Colburn, 13 years old, up on the Arizona Strip. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, Just got off the raffle hunt, uh, which you're going to hear at the end of this podcast, uh, Craig and I talking about the raffle, uh, Arizona Desert Big uh, big Game uh, Super Raffle sheep hunt. Uh, Frank Argo uh, harvested an awesome ram. uh, it's 31 inches wide, uh, 36 and a half on the Longhorn, 15 and three on the bases, uh, scores 173 and four eights, and just a fantastic ram. Uh, we're we're gonna do a podcast episode here in the future on that, but uh, you'll hear Craig and I talking about it. This this episode was was recorded uh, a while back, so not to be confused there. Um, I know there's been a bunch of great coos deer harvested uh, on the October early hunts and the November hunts are uh, going to be kicking off uh, if they're not already going right now and uh, already getting reports of some great mule deer. Uh, my buddy Giannis and uh, Stephen Rennell over at the Meat Eater got a couple of great mule deer. Um, I'll always enjoy watching their show and listening to their podcast. If you haven't, uh, check out the Meat Eater podcast. Uh, they do a great job over there. Giannis is the producer of not only the podcast, but the TV show. And him and Steve do a, do a great job. So check them out. Uh, guys, I just want to thank you again uh, for all your support. Uh, I really appreciate all the emails. Every day I wake up and I get 
handful of emails and questions and comments and keep them coming. Keep any questions coming. We're actually going to have a couple episodes where I just answer all of the questions that have come in uh, on my email. You can email me at jscottoutdoors at gmail.com and uh, you can tune into our hunting adventures mostly on Instagram uh, at jscottoutdoors and at Dar Colburn, my associate Dar Colburn. And um, we're going to have a great hunt up on the Arizona Strip and hopefully Par- Parker can harvest a great buck and m- more importantly uh, just uh, have a great time and, and enjoy a-, a bunch of our friends are going up and uh, sh- should be an awesome hunt. Guys I just want to encourage you here on this fall 2015 season to give it 110 uh, percent. Life is short and you never know when your opportunities might not exist and and uh, you, you need to make the best of every hunt, so I want to encourage you to do that. You can follow along, like I said, on Instagram, also on our Facebook, J. Scott Outdoors, YouTube, J. Scott Outdoors, and on our blog, uh, jscottoutdoors.com. Guys, let's get right to the episode with Craig Steele. Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we have Craig Steele, a uh, good friend of the podcast, uh, Exclusive Pursuit outfitter, uh, co-owner, uh, orghunt.com. Uh, Craig, how you doing? Doing well, Jay. How are you doing, bud? Good. You guys absolutely had an unbelievable year, um, antelope hunting here in Arizona. Uh, what do you have to say for yourself? I mean, I'm looking at some of these bucks on exclusive pursuit outfitters, um, Instagram, you guys slayed them. We we did well, man. We and, you know antelope in Arizona as far as rifle, you're gonna you're gonna kill them. You know it's just a matter of finding the right buck. Um, you know and the archery hunts are are always an adventure, but uh, we did well, man. We've been very very blessed to you know. There's a lot of work that goes into it, um, but you know I know we have a pretty good crew between uh, me, Jimmy, and Lee as far as doing doing antelope hunts. We we really work our butts off and funny thing is is I'm the least experienced as far as in, not necessarily bow hunting but field judging and and, and uh and uh you know rifle hunting um, out of the three of us and uh, I I learn a lot hunting with those guys and, and making mistakes and and succeeding you know i talk to eli grimmett a lot too and share stuff and um it's antelope pronghorn antelope hunting i i really enjoy it um it's a lot like sheep hunting um the rifle side of it um i really really enjoy looking over bucks and trying to be accurate and uh, it'll really really mess with your mind but uh it's, it can be a really fun hunt so yeah we had a good we had a good year he had a bang up year. I mean, I'm not an antelope hunter um, at all. Um, you know, I saw him a bunch in Unit Nine this year, and honestly, I don't know that I slowed the truck down. And 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 I know when I say that, you cringe because it's just like when someone says, "Oh, those dumb turkeys, they were everywhere. They were crossing the road, and I sped up, you know, and they flew off like quail." You know, I just cringe thinking, "There's my." turkeys that I just love and this guy's just you know not even slowing down for him but here's a question that I have for you and one thing I I did actually slow to to uh slow down just I mean a smidge but I didn't really pay a lot of attention to antelope but you have to be pretty dang close to these bucks I'm guessing to be able to evaluate them enough to really score them Tell me about that. It seems like, you know, if you're if you're outside of five, six hundred yards, they're so small. How in the world do you analyze them as much as you do? The, the, and the other thing is you do have to be close. You have to get close. You know, it's a lot like sheep. But the other thing that's a little bit more challenging than sheep, there's two things that, in my opinion, actually three. But the heat waves will kill you. Uh, oh. mirage and the time because of the time of year that we're hunting them as well you know you're, you're scouting in may through you know 
through September is when you're hunting them, so the hottest months of the year. Um, so you you can't really pull out a 60 power 95 millimeter spotting scope and look at them because the mirage is going to kill you. Um, the other thing is, you know, they're such small inch measurements. You know, your total inches on a giant buck is 90 and 82 is Boone and Crockett all time. I mean, you're you're talking, you know, the outside of a, you know, I think, a, you know, North American big game animals outside of a mountain goat, um, you know, really hard. And, that, that, you know, if you mess up any of the inches, you're really, you're really going to screw yourself. And the other thing is that their horns are black. So shadows um are 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 a big big factor to, and that changes by time of day um and you know you really can't see that i i've learned i learned i learned a ton each year um the one thing i love about guiding that just i mean you know i i thought i was always a good hunter and you know thought i was a pretty good hunter when i was a younger hunter i thought it was awesome and a super stud but you know the more i guide the more I learn, the more I get to see stuff, and that's what I love about them. The more I get to analyze how good I actually am or am not, and uh, the more I get to bounce thing off stuff off some of the best hunters in the world, and you know, like you and you know some of the guys I guide with, I I just uh, I, I really enjoy that, and that's what you have to do with antelope hunting, and you have to, you know. I think Lee talked about it on field judging. Sometimes you got to leave a buck and go look at other bucks. Um, we always talk about, you know, looking at field judging antelope. Um, you know, I didn't do an archery antelope hunt this year. Lee did, or Jimmy did, um, and Jimmy killed a buck. And we always talk about ground checking, you know. Um, and Jimmy was our guy this year because he had had a buck in his hand that he had seen, filmed, and then shot with the hunter. And so he had that barometer set you know, basically uh, it was calibrated. So everything that was, you know, anything was like, plus he has a ton of experience. Him and him and Lee live right there in Chino and Prescott Valley all their lives. You know, the world giant antelope capital of the world, you know. Um, and they, they've been able to look and hold some of the biggest antelope in the world. Um, but you know, being able to actually ground check one and go, okay, this is a 77 or this is a 82. And I seen it, I videotaped it, I held it. Then it gives you a good barometer. A lot of people, you know, I'll just be frank with this. A lot of people don't know what the hell a big animal buck is. And a lot of people look at length and they look at prongs. And one thing I've learned over the last few years is structure. And Lee has preached this to me, and, and I've kind of grown to learn it, is ant, antelope structure, uh, their horn structure, has a lot to do with getting big. And a lot of people, those those tall bucks with the prongs that flare out, and we kill one of those bucks, and he was a big buck, um, typically aren't as big as what people think they are. Um, mass is king. Mass is king on antelope. Uh, so what structure do you look for? You look for big, bulgy nasty mass big bulgy mass like you look for that's kind of what i used to look for in my girlfriends you don't look for <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah i've had a few of those uh not girlfriends but the ones that like to chase me uh you know <laughs> sure you if do. you look at your cell phone you know like uh you know whatever smartphone you have you know sideways mass there is is big but then you look on it from the from the from the edge of it, it's thin. Well, you want to look at an antelope that has like a cup, you know, that is round, bulgy, and that mass right there tends to get bigger in in my experience. And the other thing is, man, I've learned this a ton this year, and and not and we talk about it. We talk about it with elk. We talk about it with sheep. We talk about it with all the animals. Body size. Body size. Does the antelope's body size vary quite a bit? Well, that big buck that Shane Wright killed was the, that was over 90 inches. I can tell you that buck's head was this. Those guys are never, they're not really, you know, antelope hunters. And obviously that's why they, they hooked up with us. But 
Um, they walked up to that buck and they're like, oh my gosh, it looks like mule deer head. And it did. Uh, and I was under on that buck. Um, I was under last year on that buck as well. Um, but I think he put on a few inches. One year made, you know, a three or four inch difference. Um, but uh, the head on that thing was ridiculous. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, I was, ta- I was actually texting my other hunter, Ty, that hunted with us. He killed a buck that everybody was calling the heart buck. Um, and we can go into that story too, but, uh, anyway, everybody, I've had probably 10 or 15 people text me, how, how big was that big buck he killed? And, uh, you know, which one it was killed two big bucks that I was gu- guided. Um, it was actually my hunter that I took out. Um, both those big, both those bucks, um, uh, were killed within a week or two of each other. Um, and I post them up. So it was like, yeah, which, which, which one? And I always say the buck with the big prongs, that was shaped like a heart or the other buck, because the other buck, the, the giant buck, he didn't, you know, he had a, just a, a shape he couldn't really describe. Um, cause it was an antelope buck, I'm, you know, and, and everybody asked him the big buck with the big prongs and heart shape. And, that's so I'm looking at the pictures right now, Craig, and I know nothing about antelope, and I see one that's prongs flare out, mm-hmm. and he's and he's heart shaped, and then I see a buck head on that you don't even see his prongs; they're in line with with the base, if that makes sense, with the horn. And so I assume everybody's asking about the one that's prongs flare out. Yes, and and that's what people see is they see the flared out prongs, and they automatically think those prongs are seven inches when those prongs are actually just flared out, you know, um, they, they do, they look big and that buck had smaller bases than what I thought, you know, and, and he was way smaller bases than what, you know, eight or nine other guys thought that were chasing him around. Um, everybody, you know, I thought that buck was 87. Um, and everybody else thought that buck was over 90. What did he turn out to be? Uh, 85 and something gross. Um, and do you think that's because his bases started out smaller than what yeah. everybody thought a buck of that size? And then when you extrapolate that to every measurement, all of a sudden it's kind of like with sheep. You're like, uh-oh, yeah. his bases are smaller. He starts out smaller, and so he's not going to be as big as we think. Do you think that's why a lot of people had him well over 90 inches? Yes. Exactly, and, and his prongs, they, they thought his prongs were a lot bigger, um, and he's a, he's a great buck, he's a beautiful buck, Ty loves that buck, I love that buck, he's one, probably one of the best bucks taken in that unit um, on that hunt for sure, um, very, very competitive hunt, um, like I said, there was eight trucks around him opening morning, um, and uh, we were very blessed to kill that buck, but yeah, it's his, his bases were six and, and eight, I think. Um, versus, you know, the, the other buck that I, I took, his bases were seven and five eighths. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a big difference and, uh, mass is king. Mass is, mass is king on antelope, you know, a lot like sheep. You need length too, you know, the, the big buck, the 90 inch buck. I mean, he was over 16, he was 16 and a half. Now the other buck, the heart shaped buck, he was, he was 17 and something, 17 and four eights or it might've been 17 and a half, some, you know, which is 17 and four eights, but, um, somewhere in there, um, I'd have to look at the exact measurements. So you got to put your hands on two bucks that you guided for personally, that you took hunters out and two bucks over 85 inches this year. Yep. Yep. It's pretty, pretty and blessed. And you just, just, Go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna, I'll, I'm gonna <laughs> tell a story about antelope that I wrote on Facebook that it just drives me absolutely nuts. But. Okay, so then the 85 inch buck was first, and then the 90 inch buck was second. Yes. My question is, you had what you talked about is you you had the calibrator, you had your hands on the 85. Yes. You had just gone from that hunt, and you went to go do the other hunt. When you saw the 90-inch buck for for the – well, you'd seen it already, but 
when you saw it after having that 85 in your hand, did you think bigger, smaller, or write what I think he is? I thought 86 inches to 87. And what threw you off there? Body size. The mass? He was all by himself. Gotcha. Body size. And then I uh, I lost him for 24 hours, and I found him the night before the hunt. It was body size. His body size. And I didn't get close. I knew, you know, this is a lot. That was the buck you wanted to kill. Yeah, so yeah, why, why get, why get to? And then this is, so, this is another. That's something that I think, you know, a lot of guys don't don't talk about that. Is, is, is you got to get close. And if you know it's the buck you want to kill because you've inventoried, you know, 90% of what's there, there may be 10% that you haven't seen. It is what it is. He's, he's top 10% of the bucks, if not 1% of the buck in the unit. And you know, you want to kill him, whether it be for yourself or hunter or whatever. I don't stay away. I, stay away. I, I mean, I don't need to get down there and say, you know, post on Facebook. Yeah, I feel judge this bucket, you know, 89 and six eights. And he was, you know, 89 and seven eights just to say that I'm good at field judging. You know, I, what I wanted, I knew he's the going to be the buck we killed. I knew he was, you know, a beast and I didn't, need to get any closer i just i didn't even want him to know i was even around you know and and that's kind of what goes into it and i know you're the same way i mean it's just like if we go find a you know a ram that we think's 172 inches you know you know we're probably stay away from yeah him. i mean don't you think people get cute though i mean and i've gotten cute sometimes in my own and trying to get better video dude. trying to get better pitch instead of just stay away well when it's that close to the hunt is when in my mind you don't want to get too cute you know when you're when you're the the day before you know what i mean um two days out you know and if you're a month out or something you know what i mean you can get a little bit cute you know but when you're the, the day before and you know I, I just I'd prefer just to stay back and that's kind of how it was with that buck and he, he actually ditched me so you know I actually found him and then went to my daughter's volleyball game and then come back the next day and I didn't t find him until 5 30 that night and were you puckered I'm sure you were just sweating bullets you know I was but I knew the area he was at and I knew that and I knew it like the back of my hand would kill a buck out of there last year and uh, 86 inch buck out of there last year and uh you know I, I i was but i wasn't i'd seen that buck last year several times um and i i, I wasn't i wasn't really that nervous it was a quick hunt you know i actually apologize to shane for it being so quick it's the quickest hunt i've ever been associated with but i actually had you know two years of waiting to get this buck killed and you know and isn't that also you had another big buck last year that you had videoed and, a, and a, another hunter had killed it and you shared the story, I believe, on one of your social media. Yeah, that buck uh, was a buck I called Nobby. He was he was 89 and 6 eighths. Um, and I'd seen that buck for three years. Um, I originally thought he was 86 to 87. And Lee had looked at him. Lee and I had looked at him a couple times. And, you know, there was times we could have went on the raffle well actually we we talked to the we didn't talk to but we uh, got a hold of the raffle hunter um and you know but nobody really responded we didn't want to you know really for lack of better terms pimp the buck out we were at, i was actually hoping one of my best friends was going to draw the tag because he had so many points and he never drew it and uh the guy was able to smack that buck and he's a great buck i actually never even got to hunt the buck you know as far as you know, with a hunter or with my family or for myself, I just seen him, you know, kind of like this. I did, we, I had an opportunity to kill this buck, this 90 inch buck last year. We call, I, we call him the heavy buck is what we call him. Um, and, uh, the buck, the hooker two buck, the buck that we in, decided to take, he was an older buck and I thought this buck could put on and he did put on. Um, so I'm, I'm, I think he probably would have been 86 to 87 last year. Um, but he definitely put on some inches this year. I could, I know when I seen him this year, he looked 
bigger and I think I text Lee that or I text Shane that I said I think he looks bigger but you know I knew it was the buck that we were going to kill you know or try to kill so was... does a does an antelope buck a big buck like these 85 90 inch bucks when you see them at a distance do you know right away that it's a big buck or do you have to examine them to go that's a big buck for me it's 80 to for me 80 to 90 inches you can kind of see from far away but for me i don't really know until i get in there to about 300 yards depending upon the heat waves um and And how tight craig how tight of a home range do those bucks have so if you've scouted out a buck I mean, will he go a mile either way, or will he go 500 yards? What what kind of circle do they? I've have? seen bucks. I've seen bucks from year to year be you know several miles, you know, you know, seven, eight, ten miles away from where they were before. But a lot of times they have a pretty tight home range, just like this big heavy buck. Um, there was actually not as many does where he was at, uh, and more does. Um, in another area, about two miles, three miles away, um, I, I seen quite a few does in there. And he, I actually went back there several times thinking he'd pop up there, and he didn't. He was right back where he wanted to be, and he actually transitioned over because we took the other buck out of another little pocket in there. He actually was going in that other buck's area now. Um, so he, he, was, he was right in there. Now, I'd missed him several times. Um, you know, this buck was living in the areas that was kind of a little bit like the mule deer. In fact, he was browsing on Cliff, Cliff Rose um, the morning we killed him. Um, he wasn't eating grass. He was browsing. Um, and, uh, yeah, so and he had one doe with him that he picked up um, that night. Otherwise, he'd kind of pulled off and was by himself. He he was a uh, – he definitely – I mean, last year he was – I seen him se- several times. And I, I honestly – if it, uh, uh, John and a guy named Tiger actually had an archery uh, antelope hunt, and I actually was able to get a hold of them. And they'd said they'd seen him on the antelope hunt because um, they'd killed a buck out of there that I'd actually filmed. So I gave him some pictures, and I know him really well. Um, they'd seen him, so I knew he'd made it through the. All right, I was pretty sure he'd made it through the archery hunt. Um, I wasn't sure he made it through the muzzleloader hunt, but he did. I mean, there's there's still. And I, I filmed just the other day. I filmed the buck talking about leftover bucks that's in the mid to high 80s that he made it through somehow, you know. Um, but ran the gauntlet. It very and made rarely it happens. I tell you, in Unit 10 where they got 100 tags now out in the open, not very many bucks make it through. Um, 100 tags? That's ridiculous. It, it's, it's, it's unreal because you're hunting antelope country. You're not hunting the entire Unit 10. You know, yeah. so everybody thinks 100 tags. Well, that's a big unit, you know. Well, you're not hunting the entire unit 10, and they're out in the open, so it gets real competitive. That's the thing with Ty's buck, the heart buck, the buck with the flared-out prongs. I think that buck was young. Um, and so he could have been a giant, I, but, I of course, too much tag allocation, yeah. he's going to get killed. You know, and, and you know, I've I seen a lot of bucks like that. I mean, we killed a, a Lee, Lee's hunter killed an 83, and then we killed a high 70s buck. Um, but... But we we strive to kill mid eighties bucks, and I'm gonna go into that right now. About you know, in everybody that calls up or everybody that I talk to that you know, whether it be a, I got a, one of my best friends, he you know, um, he's probably gonna go to lunch with him here in a few minutes. But he he has 16 points for him. He hunts Wyoming. He's hunted Wyoming. His wife's from Wyoming. And he talked about you know wanting to kill a you know, a 90 inch buck before. And I told him, I said, Hey, my mid eighties buck is an unbelievable buck. And, you know, he knows now from me talking to him and then guiding and whatnot. And, you know, everybody correlates wait time with the size of trophy that they could get. Well, we, and I posted this the other day on Facebook and, you know, I, I'm honestly small antelope don't really get me going, but big antelope, big antelope are cool. Like the, I mean, they are, they are a neat creature. It's like a big sheep, you know. Um, a lot of people don't get going over sheep, 
but if you get the sheep bug and you know I love big sheep you know just like I love big antelope it's kind of the same infatuation and but an 82 inch all time Boone and Crock 82 inch net buck is a big buck that's a 380 inch net typical bull elk that's a I think it's a 195 inch net Boone and Crockett mule deer. It's a 168 inch net desert sheep. It's a big animal, and it's almost passe or not cool to people talk about 82 inch animal. It's almost like oh, it's just an 82 incher. Well, we kind of get loose lipped, and Lee was telling me, but we kind of get loose lipped about how we go about field judging and then loose lift on social media, picture mail and all this stuff. And you don't get official scores and you're the one that put that in my head. And I was like, ah, Jay, what are you worrying about that for? Well, now I see it because people get loose lift and then it diminishes the actual 82 inch number that an animal really is. And an 82 inch net antelope is big. So when guys call me up personally and and in Lee too I mean I talk about this with Eli Grimmett as well um, but when guys call me up and they say they want to kill a 90 incher I, I'm like well how do you know there's a 90 incher out there to kill you know I mean that's like a 90 inch antelope is like killing a 420 inch net bull elk how many of those you see typical you know, yeah. it, I mean, it, uh, I, I want to say something to one of your points and one of your things that you said is you have 18 or 20 points and, and we as outfitters get calls all the time and people say, well, I, I, won't, I won't shoot unless it's 400. I had a guy call me this year and said, you know, I, I won't shoot unless it's 400. And I said, well, you, you might as well call somebody else. Well, what do you mean? That's not a very good attitude. I said, yeah, it's being realistic. You're not going to shoot unless it's 400. How many of those have you killed? Well, I haven't. Okay. How many bulls with your bow have you killed? Well, I haven't. Okay. So you waited 18 years to get the tag. That does not mean that you deserve a 400 inch bull. That does not mean that you are entitled to a 400 inch bull. That doesn't even mean you're going to see a 400 inch bull. It means that you've applied through the state of Arizona that is hard to draw and you've had 18 or 20 years or however long it is. That means nothing. You still have to prepare for the hunt. You still have to scout for the hunt. You still have to either hire a guide, do it on your own. People's expectations are, I, I have so many points that I deserve to shoot a 180 inch ram. Or there should be because I waited. Or there should be in my unit because I waited that long. So that, so, you know, I waited that long and it's like, those animals don't care how long you waited for the tag. Yeah. There's they're, they're, they're out there trying to make a living and live That's why and trying to survive. They don't care about your 20 points that it took to draw the, you know, whatever tag of, you know, whatever unit they could care less. That's what I think is so nuts about point systems out throughout the West is if you really think about the point systems, we are nuts. For you. I know you apply for multiple states. I do. We have bonus points. I mean, we're spending thousands of dollars applying for other states, just applying. The, the crazy thing about point systems is, is you're talking, and I'm going to use the term regimes, not that, you know, there I know game and fish officers wildlife department officers that are great people and i know some that i don't care for um so i'm not you know calling them bad, bad people <laughs> or you know good people because i don't define it by the title um but we wait 5 10 15 20 30 years for permits for this one opportunity we're going through different regimes and different cycles of genetics and management you know, they, you know, the game fish reinvest. Different commissions yeah, commission. and different ideas. And we're, we're, we're expecting, you know, Arizona may not even be a trophy elk state in, you know, 10 years. You know what I mean? But we're, we're all nuts because we build these point systems and, you know, to, 
to basically put the odds in our favor as we get older to 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 put the odds in the old man's favor when really it's like we're almost you know we're almost like uh you know putting a you know buying a gun that was built you know yesterday and then putting points in there to raffle it off for 30 years later that gun's not even going to be we don't even know you know technology is going to far surpass it and that's the same thing with the the hunts is is we don't even know you know i mean the the non-resident cap could go down it could be like new mexico where you know it just drops or yeah, anything can change you know yeah. all that all that can change and and it's just amazing that you know we we do we correlate it, it it is because there is some correlation between you know the best hunts throughout the west and 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 you know the 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 draw odds you know what i mean but those change i mean how often how often do we we get those calls just like the unit 10 early rifle bull tag you know 100 permits and everybody <laughs> is wanting a you know everybody wants to shoot a 390 plus I will say something to interrupt you there, and I, I'm, I have a habit of interrupting people, but I just can't take it any longer. The 100 early rifle bull tags has absolutely decimated and ruined Unit 10. As a tr- and I'm going to say that as the record. You can quote me. I don't care who you are. It has ruined Unit 10. What happens is you get 80, 75, I don't know what the exact percentage is, 75, 80, 90 bulls get killed. Most of them are older age class bulls, and it has wiped Unit 10 out. I know I'm already going to get a few emails. There's giants in Unit 10. Okay, there's still some good bulls Those in Unit 10. Those are from the 20-year-old kids that were but around. From 10 years ago, they have absolutely ruined Unit 10 as I used to know it. When I hunted there the last time, when I had a tag in 2005, it was unbelievable. And they... Everybody is going off of, and that's a part of what you're talking about with building points. There's some of these people that have 20, 22, 23 points. They're going off of 10 years ago, unit 10 hoopla. They don't realize that the last, what is it, five years, there's been a hundred early rifle tags. And what you do when you have that many early rifle tags, you decimate the older age class bulls. And that's that's not even counting, you know. You know, so that way with the antelope, you know, they're just, I mean, the the top is getting just The cream is coming off the top. So, you know, for all of us, which I think about 90% of us that wait for these, that really want these quality experiences, it's it's a catch-22, you know. Here, here, you know, here we are, you know, we want a quality experience. We want to, you know, we want a place to hunt to ourselves on public land like it was 15, 20 years ago, um, but then we want to tag. So, you know, Fish and Game or whatever does these hoopla surveys that basically, you know, are the psychological evaluation of what you want, and then all roads point to, you know, this survey that's going to say, you know, the outcome is going to be, yeah, everybody wants a tag, so we should bump up tag numbers. Well, of course everybody wants a tag when you do this, survey that psychologically evaluates and twists and turns ultimately we all want to tag but i guarantee you when quality goes down not everybody not everybody want to tag. i mean you see that you see that in the demand for the best hunts you know and what what you're saying is like the reputation that's where go hunt you know comes in with being on the web and everything is you can change that information quickly but it takes years of marketing and then you know the outfitters you know, they live off a reputation that was 10 years ago, you know, and, 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 you know, you, you get this, you know, unit 10, uh, what, I mean, there's other units as well, you know, that, that are the same way. I think you, you know, in my personal opinion, even the unit nine hunt's gone down. Oh, it's the, it's gone down dramatically. The cream has been taken off the top and go ahead and save your email. Don't even type. I know there's still a few big bowls there, but the quality overall the quality in Arizona has gone down. I mean, that's, I mean, and that's where people, you know, they, they draw the early rifle tag or they draw the antelope tag and they want the 90-inch the buck. And when you tell them, hey, we shoot for, you know, 
a great hunt and we shoot for, you know, 84 to 86, if we can get around that number, you know, then we're static. You know, an 83 inch buck, depending on how it's going, 82 inch buck is a great buck. You know, yeah. and people are like, oh my gosh, well, in this magazine or on the web, well, don't believe everything you read in a magazine, everything you see on the web, everything everybody says, because... Yeah, how is the unit today? Yeah, how Not is, how it was how, four years ago or three years ago are, or ten years are ago. Are those scores inflated? Is it a fisheye picture? Did you actually hold the animal? Don't get me started on fisheye <laughs> so, lenses. So, if you're listening out there and use the fisheye lens, go ahead and take your two fingers and poke your eyeballs out. I can't stand fisheye so, lenses. So... I mean, good night. What's wrong with catching a 16 inch fish and calling it 16 inches? That I, I'm feeling a little spunky today, but it's like fish eye lenses. I got in, you know, I fish all summer. I got guys taking pictures of a 16 inch fish, trying to make it look 24 inches because of the lens. Just take the picture I, of a 16 inch fish with a normal camera. Thank I'll you. Tell you a little story because it's hard. I mean, you know. We all try. Everybody tries to take pictures to where it makes their animal look. But that's a but fun it's getting fun. ridiculous. That's a fun, but though. when you get to, I mean, I can Photoshop. You know, I have the graphic design skills. If you, I can add a lot of inches if you want me to. You know, on a lot of different. Actually, animals. yeah, I can send you some photos of <laughs> my own personal. I'll tell you just a little bit of story interest. going into that. I know we're rambling now, but you know, my dad killed that bull, and he's three hundred ninety inch bull. We have spiraled off three hundred ninety inch bull. It's a and giant three hundred ninety inch bull. My mom texts back, it doesn't look that big. My wife, after I get home, says, it didn't look that big. And so I stopped sending pictures. <laughs> I didn't send any pictures. I said, if you want to come see this bull, come hold the bull. Well, that's because, you know, the pictures that we get now, you know, it's just like the antelope buck. I mean, go hold that antelope buck. And yeah. you will see the actual real the the difference and you know there's guys that are great at taking pictures but my dad's six foot three going back to that bull elk and i'm six foot four and that animal was a thousand body bull elk thousand pound bull elk and you know they're just in his horn configuration he didn't have the extra i mean we got a 365 inch bull that we took that everybody thinks the bull is 400 you know, he just had super yeah. long times and he only had 51 inch beams or something, you know, yeah. what, you know, horn configuration does a lot. Body size does a lot, but it's just funny, you know, that be, because of the way pictures are, and you know, we see them all and, you know, everybody's trying to make their stuff look big, which is cool. I, I mean, I like that. I, I understand that. But when you start putting numbers, you know, that's why we talk about don't look at dead pictures and field judge. It does yeah. you absolutely no good. Well, look at the bad angles as well. As yeah, exactly. Right? You look at the bad angles, then you get some perspective. But, you know, you're not going to see a lot of bad angles from some people. It just is what it is, you know. I mean, One thing I, I want to say, and we're going to have to roll here in just a second. I wanted, on our elk recap, uh, we did an interview and you recapped your elk season. And I got so carried away, I forgot to ask you about your dad's hunt. What I want to say is, what an awesome opportunity to hunt with your dad, um, someone that you know brought you up hunting, and you guys killed a phenomenal bull. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, go check it out uh, on Craig's Instagram. And um, that's probably the reporters texting you now, wanting to hear the story on that bull. Um, yeah. I just want to say congrats to you and your dad. Um, I know that was special to you to hunt with him. And what a bull. I mean, just big, long beams, heavy, just a big, big bodied bull. And, um, you know, it's one thing to have, you know, my buddy Dar taking a picture with a bull like that. He would look like he was 475 inches. And then you take two big giant guys like you and your dad and, you know, it puts it more in perspective, but, uh, Congrats on that big bull, 390 inches. That's quite a feat there. Yeah, no, thank you, man. It was, it was a blessing. It's, it's, you know, it's all, uh, you know, my opinion. It's all, you know, was was meant to be the way it happened. It wasn't how I wrote the script, um, but you know, we ended up being able to kill a beast. Um, 
and uh, you know, as, as, as my son was able to be there because of the way it happened, because of all of our vehicle issues that I had and and whatnot, my son was able to be there, and I and I think that was supposed to happen. Um, and uh, you know, it was an awesome experience. Um, you know, you 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 know, when did three ninety stop being cool? So I mean, <laughs> I mean, it just you know is a blessing. is is awesome. You know, just just one of those deals where, you know, we didn't even measure that bull until we got. Actually, I take that back. I had a tape buried in my pack, and I didn't know about it. So we didn't even measure it. I purposely left my other tape at, tape measure at home just so I wouldn't have it. Of course, when we get it on the ground, being the competitive nature guys that my dad and I are, and one to be accurate, you know, we're trying to measure this animal with a Spanish dagger that we based the scale off of his foot being 12 inches. <laughs> <laughs> so I measured it at 381 with a Spanish dagger. And uh, anyway, when we got back to camp and actually, and I text, I think I text you, or I, and I know I text Lee, and uh, uh, I think I text 375 to 385 is what I thought, you know, and that's why I had such a wide variance. Because honestly, I, I, my dad thought the bull was better than what I thought he was. Um, I, I honestly, you know, once we had him on the ground, I honestly was thinking 376 to 380. Uh, well, it's a big body. No, big body was, throws it off. It's like Jason Harrison's bull last year in Montana. He had a horse body. And, you know, I was thinking 350, 355, and it was 371. But it had a horse body, and it throws it off every time on no matter what animal you're hunting. Big time. Um, just awesome job. Uh, congrats on a great year. Looking forward to, to uh, hunting with you on this uh, Super Raffle uh, Desert Bighorn Sheep Hunt here. Uh, we're we're uh, going to be hunting over the next couple weeks, and I uh, look forward to looking at some sheep with you. Uh, I want to thank you, as always, for being on, and thank you for your real and, and uh, honest uh, social media stuff and all the stuff that you kick out. The content's awesome. Real quick, uh, you, can watch, real. you can watch... Uh... Uh, my hunt season with exclusive pursuit outfitters at uh, uh, orc com, our YouTube channel. It'll be on season two, Hunt for More. Um, that'll get done sometime in December. So Awesome. You know, the Hunt for More series last year, your season last year, it was awesome. I love watching you video all the hunts, and you capture a lot of things that a lot of people don't, and that's the emotion of the hunt. And want to uh, encourage all the listeners out there to check out all of Craig Steele's stuff. Um, you can go to orghunt.com and find him there, Exclusive Pursuit Outfitters, uh, at Craig Steele on Instagram, Exclusive Pursuit Outfitters on Instagram and Facebook. Of course, uh, awesome YouTube channel, orghunt.com. And uh, Craig, as always, thanks for being on, buddy. Uh, can't wait to see you here in a few days. And uh, let's go kill a big sheep and have a, have a good time doing it. Awesome, man. Sounds good. All right. Take care. Guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. I wanted to remind you to, to tune in tomorrow, Monday, at GoHunt.com on their Facebook page and on their website as they announce the October Coos Deer Hunt giveaway uh, with Colburn and Scott Outfitters, with Dar Colburn and I. And uh, hopefully two of the winners are Jay Scott uh, Outdoors podcast listeners. I wish you guys uh, the best of luck in that drawing. Uh, I also wanted to tell you, if you haven't signed up for GoHunt.com Insider, uh, click go to GoHunt.com, click on the blue Join Now button, and use the J. Scott promo code. When you do that, they... GoHunt.com will automatically send you a $50 Kuyu gift card. And you can use that gift card at Kuyu.com to order some great hunting gear. Uh, guys, I want to thank you again for tuning in to this podcast. And I want to thank our sponsors. And you can follow along our adventures on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and on the jscottoutdoors.com uh, blog. And um, I, I just uh, can't thank you guys enough and uh, can't wait for the next episode. We've got some great stuff coming.